Hi Venkatesh, hope you are doing well. I have received your resume which looks fine and will be discussed later on in the feedback session. Right Venkatesh? Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, Venkatesh, let's get started. Uh, Venkatesh, tell me about yourself. Yes, sir. As you know, my name it is Venkatesh. I am from Andhra Pradesh. Uh, I hold bachelor's degree in electronics and communication engineering. I have developed strong foundation in data analysis and software development, which I have applied in various projects. Apart from that, I have done internships mainly focused on data validation. Apart from my technical skills, I possess strong communication and uh, interpersonal abilities. And I'm very passionate about my work and to solve real world problems. That's all about me. Okay. So, uh, Venkatesh, why again into data driven domain? Uh, from childhood onwards, uh, I had strong foundation in problem solving. And I choose in the online uh, data is uh, generated day by day. This profession is never end in my point of view. That's why I choose this as my career path. All right, Venkatesh. So, coming to tech stacks, in what all tools are you proficient in? I am very proficient in uh, SQL, Excel, or BI, and Python. Perfect. So let's get started, Pankitesh. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All yes, right. Sir, I'm ready. Fine. Yes, so sir. my first question is, uh, Pankitesh, how do you, uh, how do window function work in SQL and uh, when would you use them? Window functions are nothing but uh, these are the functions used to calculate uh, across set of rows uh, based on related row. So these functions use for uh, reducing the complexity. We have different types of functions like analysis functions, ranking functions, and aggregate functions. Yeah. Mainly these functions are used for uh, reducing complexity and uh, uh, reusability. Oh, okay. Um, okay, my next question is, uh, what is the purpose of indexing in SQL? And how would you decide when to create an index? Yes, when we got the large data set, uh, it will improve the query performance. It will optimize the uh, database and we can filter the data easily by using indexes. So it is used in very large, very large data sets in the real world scenarios. And we have different types of indexes like cluster index and non cluster index. So, uh, Venkatesh, can you please explain me the difference between union and union or? Yes, sir. Union will combine the result sets of two queries uh, without duplicates. Uh, and coming to union all, it will combine the result sets of result queries of two sets uh, with duplicate values. Uh, in union, and union all will have common columns with same data types. Okay. Are you sure on that? Yes, I am sure. Okay. So, uh, now what do you understand by the term CTE? Have you ever used CTE in SQL? Yes. Yes, yes sir, I use CTE. CTE. CTE refers to common table expression. It is nothing but temporary result set, uh, which is used for uh, usability and which reduces the complexity in the database uh, and it is used as with with class uh, may i know the benefits of using ct yes sir uh, by using ct we can reuse the ct ct query in anywhere in the program code and we can it reduces it reduces the complexity when it comes to real world scenarios all right all right all right so that's from my end. Uh, now let's. Uh, okay, so uh, let's understand uh, how proficient are you in Excel? So how would you rate yourself, Venkatesh, when it comes to SQL on a scale of 10? Sorry, Excel, when it comes to Excel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how would you rate yourself? When it comes to Excel, yes, when it comes to Excel I would view myself as mm -hmm. 7 out of 10. Okay. okay. So uh, my first question is, how do you use index and match functions together? How does it improve over VLOOKUP? 
Yes, sir. And when it comes to we look, uh, it searches for a value in vertical direction only. Uh, when it comes to index max, both we, we, we can search the value in anywhere in the table. Index will uh, give the uh, particular uh, value or referential. Match will combine the result with and uh, compare the value. If we got the exact result, it will return the value, exact value in in table anywhere. Like well, it will uh, vertical direction or horizontal direction, anything. Well, so um, Venkatesh, tell me, how can you use Excel to forecast future data trends? Mm -hmm. Have you used so far? Ah, yes, sir. In the Excel, we have um, different charts available, like line chart, uh, bar chart. For uh, forecasting, uh, many people using line chart for a trend analysis over that time. Uh, we can use the uh, line chart for forecasting like that. Sir. Okay, all right. So uh, again, what is the purpose of data validation in Excel and how could you implement it? Data validation refers to filter the data when it comes to large data set and we can replace the values using data validation. In the ribbon, we have data option. In the data option, we have data validation. By using that, uh, we can restrict the data to some level. Okay, all right. Uh, what is the use of offset function, Mankitesh? And offset in which scenario, and in which scenario it is most useful? So, in offset, uh, when it comes to offset, when you don't want uh, some data, you, you need only particular data. When it comes to particular data, you can use offset as a filter. So if I have a data like 20 rows, I don't want uh, starting 10 rows. I want only from 11 to 20. In okay. that case, I can use offset. Okay. Uh, have you ever used Excel solver? Uh, no, sir, I haven't used that till now. Okay, not any. Okay. Uh, so how proficient are you in Power BI? I will view myself as 7 out of 10, sir. Okay. So let's get started. Just let me know the basic difference between Power BI Desktop and Service. Power BI Service. Yes, sir. When it comes to Power BI Desktop, it is used for creating dashboards based on data. When it comes to Power BI Service, it is used for uh, uh, sharing the dashboards, collaboration. Okay. Like publishing the dashboards in the Power BI service. Okay, fine. All right. So uh, how would you optimize data refresh in Power BI for large data sets? So in the Power BI desktop, we have option like refresh. We can, uh, in Power BI service, we have option like refreshing, periodic refreshes for scheduling. We have to schedule the periodic refreshes in the Power BI service when it comes to large data sets. Are you sure on that? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, Vandatesh, uh, kindly help me out and explain me out how to create a dashboard in Power BI and what are the key components? We have different components that is mainly used for uh, generating the dashboards in the Power BI. First, we have to collect the data from get data option. Okay. Like we can get the data from different sources uh, uh, like Excel, server, uh, and uh, my, MySQL databases. After getting the data, we have to transform the data in the Power Query Editor. Power Query Editor is like an ETL process. Uh, we have to uh, change the data types, uh, like uh, filtering the data. Like uh, It is a data analysis part. After the data analysis, uh, in the report view, we can uh, create the dashboards based on the columns types. Like if it is a date, we can use some other charts. If it is a, if we want a trend analysis, we use a line chart. If we want proportion data, we use pie charts. Uh, if we want uh, categorical data, then we use bar charts. Like that, we use the that we can create the dashboards. Okay. Let me know the use of quick measures in Power BI and uh, how do you how do they simplify calculations? Yes, sir. Generally, we use measures in the report view. It will not create impact on tables. Like uh, it is not uh, 
created in physical view. Uh, quick measures used for just the filtering using JAX in the report view. Uh, by using that, we can generate the dashboards. Okay. All right. So um, my next question is, um, have you ever used Power Query to merge and append data from multiple sources? Uh, yes, sir. I have used that. Uh, okay. What's much. the process for that? So, um, in the Power Query editor, we have option like merge. We can merge the table columns like in single column. When you use append, the data will add to the end of the uh, table. Okay. And if you, if it comes to merge, it will combine the two columns into a cell, but it is become a larger. Well, so Venkatesh, uh, what are libraries are you familiar with when it comes to Python? I used Pandas, NumPy, and Matplot, Matplotlib, and C1 libraries. Okay. So how would you use Python for exploratory data analysis? Can you provide me with an example? Ah, yes, sir. Uh, in Pandas, we can have data frames uh, by using uh, data frame is nothing but uh, uh, it is a two-dimensional data structure and it mainly works with relational label data. So we have different methods in the Pandas libraries. So like uh, when it comes to data analysis part, we have drop in a fill in a methods available in Pandas. So after uh, uh, analysis of data, we can create the dashboards using matplotlib and c libraries. So, uh, we can generate the line charts, pie charts, and scatter plots as well using a matplotlib and c libraries. Okay, done. So, uh, what is the major difference between merge and join functions in Pandas? Yes, sir. When it comes to merge, uh, it will join the tables like uh, based on some condition, whatever we given. And when it comes to joins, uh, uh, we have different types of joins. We can use that joins. Uh, and so that's all I know. Okay. I haven't used it that very much. All right. So uh, Venkatesh, my last question. OK. Explain the use of Lambda function in Python with a practical example. Uh, yes, sir. Like. Yeah, lambda function is an anonymous, anonymous function. It mm. has no name. Like uh, it reduces the complexity of uh, data. Like it takes uh, uh, any number of arguments with single expression. Like I want uh, um, square values of uh, two square values. So I can use uh, uh, x square uh, colon and x two into x. Like that, uh, it simplifies the way of uh, problem calculation. It provides a way to reduce the complexity of uh, programming. Okay, fine. That's it. All right. Okay, apart from this, I'm, I'll be asking questions um, it's related to data analytics. Okay. Yes. So, uh, Venkatesh, tell me, how do you ensure data quality and accuracy in your analysis? So for data, data quality, we use statistic methods like mean, mode, median methods. So it ensures that uh, data quality is fit for uh, analyzing or reporting. Like we have cardinality and uh, data modeling techniques available in the Power BI as well as uh, Excel. All right. Likewise, we can uh, ensure that data is quality or not. Okay. Uh, can you tell me a situation? where you have to handle uh, stakeholders conflicting interpretation of data. Yes, sir. When it comes to stakeholders, uh, <clears throat> they just give the problem statement uh, about what they want, uh, like a scenario based um, statement. So for a data analysis part, we have to understand the problem statement first very clearly. After that, uh, understanding the problem statement, uh, we need to uh, analyze the data. Before that, we have to collect the data from client server or internet, anything. After collection of data, we have to explore the data for uh, any missing values or inconsistencies present or not. After uh, exploration, we can generate the data to the dashboards. Okay. So, uh, 
So how do you prioritize? Uh, generally, how do you prioritize when it is the task when faced with multiple data requests? Yes, sir. First of all, um, when it comes to prioritize, I give the, uh, based on timelines, based on deadlines, I prioritize the tasks. Okay. Uh, and I stay very focused and very calm, even in present situations. Uh, and I, I solve the problem step by step. Like uh, after step by step calculation, I prefer for times, time deadlines. Likewise, I, I solve the problems when it comes to multiple tasks. Okay, perfect. So, um, how do you handle again uh, conflicting priorities and tight deadlines in a team environment? So, when it comes to team, uh, I do or provide the work based on the individual strengths. After that, I collecting the data. I will collect the data from my teammates, whatever they solve the problem. After collecting everything from my teammates, uh, and I will again recheck the data. If I have a time, then I will solve as soon as possible if there is a time available. And if there is no time, I will do my own without uh, giving the others. So, Vankatesh, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Next five years, uh, I see myself expertise in both professional aspects, technical and data field. I want to take more responsibilities um, such as leading a team or mentoring a junior analyst like that. Okay, all right. So uh, that was all from my end. Thank you for the interview round, uh, Venkatesh. Now let's have a feedback session. Yes, okay. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. So, uh, okay, Venkatesh, uh, as per the feedback of mine, all right, uh, the name you said, latest education you said, but uh, right now, are you currently working somewhere or? No, sir. I'm a fresher, sir. Fresher. All right. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, so, you could, uh, any internship done from anywhere? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am I had an internship from Messenger and Tata as well. Okay, all right. So you should have mentioned one line on your parents. Okay, that was missing. All right. Okay. And uh, skills, uh, you could have emphasized on the skills part also. And any key achievement, let it be technical or non technical, that would be added. That could have been added. Okay. okay. Your technical part is wonderful. No doubt. Okay. Coming to the presentation skills, you have a um, knowledge how to present your statements. Okay. And uh, your body posture was also good enough. Okay. Eye to eye contact was also there. Uh, you didn't struggle to phrase a sentence. And uh, yes, somewhere I saw you were uh, using fillers. Uh, try you uh, try avoiding fillers. Right and uh, pronunciations okay so okay. yeah concentrate more on some pronunciation part as well uh, tone was average not that high not that low okay and uh, and you were going slow while speaking okay so that's all from my end and uh, looking at your resume your resume has github link and linkedin link as well okay and your ATS score somewhere comes around 73. Okay. So it is a good score to get started with. All right. Okay. So all the very best, Mangitesh. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.